that how you do it? Is that the thing? I just remember this one gif of Mike Durnt where he's got like he's doing this like it's like this but he's like It's hard. It's hard. It's like fucking moonwalking. You ever tried to moonwalk? It's a weird thing. Anyways, today I'm going to do something for the first time that I think I'm going to do fairly often because I don't always have shit to talk about. Um, I uh, asked a couple of uh, friendos and uh, watchers of the vlog to suggest to me a topic um, to talk about for a little bit that I could maybe do in like 20 minutes because I'm trying to practice getting into that 20 minute wheelhouse. What was that? That was not appropriate. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get into that 20 minute uh, wheelhouse sort of thing so that not all of my vlogs are like an hour long. Um, so I got one, um, a funny one actually for reasons that I'm going to talk about probably more than the actual vlog itself. But um, so uh, I got suggested by, uh, I can never decide on a name for this person, um, by Courtney. Um, Rant about a song that you discovered at the perfect time in your life. Well, let me tell you why this topic is really funny. It took me all night to figure out why. I didn't stay up all night, but like this morning I figured it out. Um, so um, the reason that topic is really funny is because uh, at my old position at work, um, we would have these monthly meetings. And um, every month someone would be responsible for coming up with icebreaker questions that everyone had to answer and it was like ah, team building activity you know let's learn funny shit um and they purposefully got me right before i left so they're like all right month of march you're gonna do the you're gonna do the icebreaker questions mr funk and i'm like really really and so i'm gonna tell this story i really wanted to come up with some really like awkward ass questions so that they would like never do it again although they'd never have to because i got a new job but like i really wanted to come up with some like super awkward questions um and i i didn't they ended up being pretty normal um since it was saint patrick's day at the time uh one of them was what is your favorite thing that is green and everyone answered money like a bunch of fucking bullshitters you're supposed to say Luke's lightsaber from Return of the Jedi. Um, and uh, the second question I answered was, what is a song that is tied to a particular memory, like a funny memory in your life? Um, and like, so when when uh, when I got DM'd that question or that, or that topic, um, I was like, why does that sound so familiar? Did I just like answer this? Was this part of our question bot or whatever? And no, it wasn't. It was a question that I asked. Um, more proof that we are, in fact, the same person somehow. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's the question uh, the, or the topic or whatever you want to call it. Rant about a song you discovered at the perfect time in your life. God, <laughs> um, it's th that's very different. And the answers to the answers to the question that I asked and the one that uh, she gave me are, are very different. Um and it's like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like something that's that's like happened as I've gotten older or whatever. But it's like, I always have a hard time recalling this. Like if someone's like, name five of your favorite games. I'm like, duh, duh, duh. <laughs> you know, or like name five games. Or like uh, one we did in Tim's Discord a couple weeks ago was name your top five JRPGs. And I'm like, I do not know any. <laughs> like I don't, I just, I don't. Um, Kingdom Hearts maybe? Like Tui, does that even count? I don't know. Um, so there was there was a lot of, of that and it's like this is the same thing I got a whole just so you, for context um, right now over here I'm padding a tower of CDs that I can't bring into the shot although I wish I could I think I just broke it um, I really need to at some point I'm going to get a new phone and then I'll start doing vlogs on my phone it'll be way better um, but like yeah right over here there's a tower of CDs and I like I just look at it and I'm like, fuck, I don't even know the answer to this question. It's very hard to determine. I feel like in the last 10 years, especially, songs really haven't come like at the perfect time in my life. I don't think um, it's a little bit weird. Like when I think of answers to this question, I mostly think about songs from high school. Um, in particular, though, um, and I've talked about this before, but this fucking 
CD comes up a lot. Um, I talked about this in a very early vlog um, called 10 Years Without, which was five years ago now almost no four it's coming up on four years it's coming it's actually coming up on four years wow um when i talked about the death of a friend and this album um kind of helps me get through that um there was a particular particularly the song called the angel and the one which of course you know i, I feel like very much um i i feel like it's pretty self-explanatory Definitely helped me um, cope with that and, uh, you know, sort of contextualize it. But also the song, um, The Spider from this album, uh, had very much the same vibes. Um, and I don't talk about The Spider as much, but I do remember it from that time. Um, but what's funny about that is that, like, it really doesn't count as an answer to this question because... <laughs> because I this, this album came out in 2008 right and um the the death of a friend thing oh wow that's actually like broke as hell um the death of a friend thing didn't happen until the next year but um 2008 was like when i was really like when i actually kind of had a crush on the person so this is kind of the album this and pinkerton are the album that i remember um from about that time now pinkerton is an album which i don't think i actually have on this thing because um, it's a deluxe edition, so it's thick, and I think I lost the first disc, which is really annoying. Um, that's another good example because that album is full of like the primal rage of a of a teenage boy um, trying to experience emotions for the first time. Um, but yeah, no, those those I actually got those albums in two thousand and eight, um, and the other thing didn't happen in two thousand in two thousand nine. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, what what music was I listening to at the time? And the answer was. Uh, this this album right here had come out two weeks before. Um, this album was hugely influential to me at the time um, as well because I loved it a lot. Um, and it's it's still one of my favorite Green Day albums, actually. Um, this just the whole tone and epic scope of it was was really was really fucking good, man. I tell you. Um, but I don't know that it really spoke to me. See, I'm not super, I'm not very much like a lyrics person. So it's not like I hear a song and I'm like, this is describing me right now. Although, God, I, again, I know there's one. I know there's one because like there are definitely sometimes when I'll, uh, I'll come up with songs or I'll hear songs and I'll be like, you know what? I really feel this now more than I did, you know, before. Um, and I, I feel like that's just a, you know a thing but i also feel like there's a lot of recontextualization um when it comes to that because like where's where's this where's this album at i can find it this is just uh me playing where's that cd i know oh here it is um i was thinking about this song recently because um the song is is cynical it's the first song off of this album which is blink 182's california um There's a uh, you can just fucking break out the lyrics for this because I don't I don't know them. Um, ironically, I think the reason I was thinking about cynical was um, because there's a Taylor Swift song on the radio that I've had in my head all weekend. I think it's called like Antihero or something, but it reminds me of the beginning of cynical. There's a cynical feeling saying I should give up. You said everything you'll ever say. There's a moment of panic when I hear the phone ring. Anxiety's calling again. So like. Don't wake, don't wake me up before you leave. Is there the slightest chase of what you once believed? So, lost my voice while fighting my way out. That's a, that's a really interesting, like, like, Cynical's a really interesting song. It's really short, but, like, I don't know. You can tell it's written by an aging Mark Hoppus reflecting on the fact, reflecting on, like, the fact that this is the eighth album that he's written for. You know what I mean? And it's like, I've thought about that, like, as a musician, like, at what point do you say everything you've ever said? You know what I mean? Or, like, because so many bands, especially the ones that I like, like Green Day and, and Blink-182, and, you know, a lot of them are older now. They're in that weird uh, space 
where like they're kind of in that 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 twilight space where they're not quite a legacy act yet like the fucking rolling stones or something like that they're still writing new music and putting out new music but like nobody fucking likes it like ain't nobody out here talking about bridges to babylon and uh y'all can agree with that because y'all ain't talking about bridges to babylon um which was funny as a child because i think that was like contemporary when i was shut up anyway (laughs) Um, nobody knows what that is. Google it and then be like, what the fuck is this? I don't even know. Um, but like, so like to hear Mark Hoppus sing that is kind of like, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird that I feel that I'm younger than him and I still kind of feel it's like, what, what really do I have to say? And like, as someone who struggles creatively, it's like, what am I saying? What do I have to say? It's like, I haven't even said anything yet. And I feel like I don't have anything left to say, you know, it's really, it's kind of a weird, uh, kind of a weird situation there um but other than that it's like a lot of songs just are like there's a lot of songs that are significant in my life um that i don't know if they necessarily came along at the perfect time but they were there specifically like where would i be if i didn't hear green days uh wake me up when september ends like would the band have even started you know or steady as she goes by the raconteurs um which is it's around here somewhere i don't know exactly where it is um yeah, I don't know that there's, like, really a whole lot of songs that, that... Oh, it's right here. Found it. Um, that, uh, that do that. Like, although, um, like, Seven Nation Army, right? That was a song that made me feel like, okay, cool. Playing the bass is a cool thing to do. Um, it wasn't the first song I heard on the bass. Or it wasn't even, like, the song that wanted me to play bass, like, because... That just came out out of necessity because, you know, my friend was learning to play guitar. So I was like, okay, I'll play bass and we can be in a band. Like, that was that was the thing. Originally, I was I was going to try to play drums because we owned a drum set and my dad played drums. But I wasn't good at drums and I'm not good at drums and I'm glad I don't because I'm really bad with the beat. But, like, you know, that's the thing. I don't know. It's kind of a hard song. To, it's, it's kind of a hard question to answer because, again, I feel like there are a lot of songs that I don't really that don't necessarily click the first time with lyrics um it's not really the first thing that i listen to um a lot of the times it's like you know what a sound that inspires me or a tone or whatever um that i tend to love um or it's like i'll remember a piece of music or a song that inspired me creatively and that'll be a big important thing like for example ah here it is right here um you know pirates music was essential to me when i wrote when i was writing my my uh god i guess i could call it my first novel now uh the mage boy series it very much informed his character and the music was like something that i would listen to while writing um for example in pirates 4 there's the song uh the track mermaids um, which correlates it precisely to a scene that I wrote in that book. Um, or, uh, or or Blackbeard, of course, the villain theme from, from uh, Pirates 4, um, correlates perfectly to a scene that I wrote because of that music. Um, similarly, um, of course, we have the goat... <laughs> The Xenoblade soundtrack. This is still on the plastic, by the way. And I, at this point, I don't know if it's coming out. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm still happy I own it. Um, a lot of scenes in Mage Boy were uh, synced up to the soundtrack of this beauty. Um, so there's that. There's like one of the gems of my CD collection. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could also talk about something like like this, which influenced me throughout my life or, or something like that. But obviously I don't relate to any of the lyrics on here because they're in Japanese. Like, you know, I don't know. It's really hard for me to, to do that. But like, um, just because it's, it's like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to put. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I think you've heard me flounder around this question uh, quite a bit. But, like, I don't know. 
It's just there are various songs, and I'll, I'll come up with one like way later that I'm like, oh yeah, I really did relate to that song because it's not like I haven't gotten into into music. Oh, I thought of a good way I could I could search for uh, entries into this, and I could look at my yearly playlists. Um, oh wow, I actually do have a bunch of a bunch on one 2023s. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's see. Um, yes, Banana Time, that's the one. Oh, I do like Joe P. Off My Mind. That was a pretty, that was a pretty good one. Um, well, this isn't happening pretty well. Like, I definitely feel like there was a, uh, a, uh, 21 Pilot song that would fit the bill, too, because it's like, I listen to a lot of them, and their songs are about stuff that we feel, you know? Um, I very much, uh, relate to Found God in a Tomato by the Psychedelic Porn Crumpets. That's the one. Um... That's it. That's the winner. Yep, this is not a... Wow, my one for 2020 was super long. I was really good at documenting that year. Oh, although this one does have a really good one on it. And I know where the CD is. Um... I thought I did. Oh, here it is, right here. Hang on, we can do this. Um, this is a good, fairly recent example of this, though. Um, the Smiths. Um, what was the song called? Um, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now. Oh my god, I love that. Because, uh, so this was, oh man, 2020, right? Yeah, this was 2020 as well. Um, and, you know, it was the year of the pandemic. And, um... You know, everyone was, like, fucking off <laughs> and, like, quarantined and shit. And um, I never was. I worked the same that year as everybody else because, like, I was an essential worker, essentially. And, like, work was still shitty. And, I, I, you know, I was coming up on, on like, five years of the job, uh, you know, and... Uh, just thinking about everything that had changed and how much I was not particularly happy with it or whatever. Um, <laughs> and uh, Heaven Knows I'm Miserable Now is a song that very much speaks to that experience. This is actually, this is actually a really good example um, because I remember hearing about it and just the blasé way he goes, I was looking for a job and then I found a job and heaven knows I'm miserable now. Like... I don't know if that's the right melody because he does change it up. Um, but, like, it's such a good, blasé, very British song that, like, it does speak to how that feels. Because at that point, I knew how it felt to, like, work a mundane job. Um, why in my mind, why do I waste valuable time on people who don't care if I live or I die that's bad don't do that <laughs> um but yeah that's actually a really good example so um because I definitely felt like that and that's that's in the last couple of years so um this whole album is kind of like that I think oh god who's who's the singer for this is it more oh, who is the singer for this who's the singer I should know this isn't it Morrissey or something no oh god I'm gonna feel embarrassed now okay we have to we have to find out. We have to find this out. Is that him? That looks like Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, it is Morrissey. I was right. Um, that's probably him. Why does he look like Sam Witwer? He looks like Sam Witwer. Kind of. But like mixed with some other actor that I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, <laughs> the last song on this album is called Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want. I ha haven't had a dream in a long time. 
see the life I've had would make a good man bad. That's like literally half the lyrics in the song, apparently. Yeah, I haven't listened to this album. I don't know that I've ever listened to this album all the way through, actually. I had a post-punk phase uh, in late 2020 um, where I started listening to 80s music like Tears for Fears and um, uh, the Smiths and uh, Echo and the Bunnymen and Joy Division. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, So that was cool. But yeah, we've hit 20 minutes. Congrats. I did it. Whew. Okay. Um, that's the song. If you have any songs like that that you would like to share, um, then go for it, man. Cool. Songs that hit you at the perfect time in your life. Let's go.